1973, the rule of the Durrani Empire in Afghanistan ended after a bloodless coup d'etat and established the Republic of Afghanistan with Mohammad Daud Khan as prime minister. This was not favorable to Pakistan for some reasons. So, the Pakistani prime minister, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, encouraged Afghan Islamists to fight against the regime. A Soviet-backed coup in 1978 killed Daud Khan, and the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan came into power. The rule faced opposition from the conservative rural population. The Soviet forces entered Afghanistan in 1979, which prompted its Cold War rival, the United States, to support the rebels fighting against the Soviet-backed Afghan government. The CIA, a civilian foreign intelligence service of the federal government of the United States, poured foreign aids for the Islamic warriors, the Mujahideen, which literally means fighters of the way of Allah or any person performing jihad. CIA would rather support the Islamic fundamentalists, Mujahideen, than risk communists' rule over Afghanistan. From 1979 through 1989, the CIA began supplying arms and money, which was like $630 million per year by 1987, and a total of five to six billion US dollars to factions fighting against the Soviets in their invasion of Afghanistan in what was known as Operation Cyclone. Containment of the Soviet Union became the notorious American policy in the post-World War II years. The President of the United States, Harry S. Truman. To generate formidable American support for the policy, President Harry S. Truman overstated the Soviet threat to the United States. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. It inspired a hysterical wave of anti-communism in the US and set the stage for the emergence of McCarthyism and eventually the Cold War. Soviet forces withdrew from Afghanistan in 1989 and after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Afghan warlords raced for power. Although Operation Cyclone officially ended in 1989 with the withdrawal of the Soviet troops from Afghanistan, U.S. government funding for the Mujahideen continued through 1992. Burhanuddin Rabbani, this guy, became the president of the Islamic State of Afghanistan. In 1994, the Mujahideen commander, Muhammad Omar, leader of the Taliban, led the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, which sought to end the warlord rule. By 1996, the Taliban seized Kabul, capital of Afghanistan. A strict Islamic rule was imposed in areas under their control. The Northern Alliance, the good guys, was formed to fight against the Taliban. Between 1992 to 1999, up to 100,000 Pakistanis fought on the side of the Taliban. The civil war was brutal. By 2001, the Taliban controlled 90% of Afghanistan. After Osama bin Laden founded the Al-Qaeda in the late 1980s, he moved Al-Qaeda operations to eastern Afghanistan in 1996. After killing more than 200 people in the 1998 United States Embassy bombings in Africa, the attack which brought bin Laden and Al-Qaeda to the attention of the U.S. public for the first time, Bill Clinton ordered missile strikes on militant training camps in Afghanistan. It resulted in the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, placing bin Laden on its 10 most wanted fugitives list. Sanctions were imposed on Taliban, calling for surrender of bin Laden after he was indicted for the bombings. Bin Laden's actual goal was to lure the United States into Afghanistan, which had long been called the Graveyard of Empires. By 2001, Bush authorized a covert action program to direct the course of Afghan war in favor of the Northern Alliance. Ahmad Shah Massoud, the leader of the Northern Alliance, sought help in his European Parliament address in 2001. 
He warned that his intelligence had gathered information about an imminent large-scale attack on U.S. soil. On September 9th, two Al-Qaeda members killed Massoud. Then, the deadliest terrorist attack in human history happened on American soil on September 11th, 2001. 2,977 victims and 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists died, exceeding that of Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor. As of June 2009, 836 responders, including firefighters and police officers, died. Four civilian aircrafts valued at $385 million were lost. The replacement cost of major buildings of the World Trade Center amounted to $4.5 billion. Pentagon damage reached $1 billion. Property and infrastructure damage, federal emergency funds, direct job losses, unrecoverable property, losses to New York City, losses to insurance industry, loss of air traffic revenue, and fall of global market approach value near two trillion US dollars. Our way of life, our very freedom came under attack. The Taliban condemned the attack. A five-point ultimatum was made to the Taliban to close immediately every terrorist training camp, hand over every terrorist and their supporters, and give the United States full access to the terrorist training camps for inspection. Bush administration obtained passage of the USA Patriot Act, which was designed to fight domestic terrorism in October. It considerably broadened the search seizure, and detention powers of the federal government. Three weeks later, on October 7th, Operation Enduring Freedom was launched, and Afghanistan was officially invaded by the U.S. The opening stage of the invasion was the Battle of Tora Bora, fought at the impregnable cave complex in eastern Afghanistan in December 2001. Operation Anaconda in March 2002 drove most Al-Qaeda and Taliban to neighboring Pakistan or to rural and remote mountainous regions. The gigantic Department of Homeland Security, designed to coordinate the fight against domestic terrorist attack, was authorized in 2002. The U.S. started securing cooperation of the Russian Federation and resumed a long-neglected alliance with Pakistan, which provided political support and access to air bases. It also allied with the long-marginalized Afghan rebels. However, the U.S. turned most of its attention over to Iraq. Although the regime was not believed to be involved in the 9-11 attacks, there was a Taliban resurgence between 2003 to 2005 who continued to fight the U.S.-led coalition and the Afghan forces. The NATO-led military mission, ISAF, started replacing the U.S. troop in southern Afghanistan by the year 2006. But the Taliban were not completely rooted out. NATO operations continued into 2007. On the 11th of September 2008, militants killed two U.S. troops in the east. This brought the total number of U.S. losses to 113, more than in any prior year. By the end of 2008, the Taliban apparently had severed remaining ties with Al-Qaeda. By 2009, during the Obama administration, more than 30,000 troops were dispatched in Afghanistan. Drone strikes in Pakistan increased substantially. At least six CIA officers were killed in a suicide attack in December. 2010 saw the most insurgent attacks of any year since the war began, peaking in September at more than 1,500. Insurgent operations increased, as well as the deployment of the troops from the U.S. too. WikiLeaks published the internal U.S. military logs of the war, or the Afghan War Diary, one of the largest leaks in U.S. history. It revealed how coalition forces had killed hundreds of civilians in unreported incidents. I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. The On May 2nd, 2011, Osama bin Laden was killed in Pakistan by United States Navy SEALs under Operation Neptune Spear. Al-Qaeda and the Pakistani militant groups, Tehreek-e Taliban, vow retaliation against the U.S. CNN says less than 100 troops as well as military equipment have been moved out. Obama announced that 33,000 troops would be withdrawn by 2012. Northern Alliance was reformed into United Front 
to oppose the emergence of the Taliban in Afghanistan in 2011. Withdrawal of troops continued, and there were also resurgence of the Taliban in 2015. Throughout 2015, the U.S. launched about 1,000 bombs and missiles at targets in Afghanistan. By August 2019, the Taliban controlled more territory than at any point since 2001. It's time for American troops to come home. On April 13th, U.S. President Joe Biden announced the withdrawal of all remaining troops in Afghanistan by September 11th, 2021. It is estimated that 38,000 civilians have been killed as a result of the fighting in Afghanistan at the hands of all parties to the conflict. Over the course of the war, more than 65,000 Afghan security forces, 200 Northern Alliance forces, 2,400 U.S. forces, plus more than 1,000 coalition forces were killed. More than 70,000 Taliban forces, 2,000 Al-Qaeda forces, and 2,400 ISIL forces were killed. More than 2.2 million people remained refugees in 2013. 3.7 million children were not attending school. 60% of girls did not attend school. The estimate for the cost of deploying one U.S. soldier in Afghanistan is over 1 million U.S. dollars each year. In March 2019, the United States Department of Defense estimated fiscal obligations of 737 billion U.S. dollars have incurred expended from 2001 to 2018 in Afghanistan at a cost of $3,714 per taxpayer. It is estimated that since late 2001, the U.S. has appropriated an estimated $6.4 trillion through 2020 in budgetary costs related to and caused by the post-9-11 wars. The original mission was to defend the U.S. against future terrorist threats from Al-Qaeda and affiliated organizations, but it has expanded from fighting in Afghanistan to more than 80 countries. Even if the U.S. withdraws everything from everywhere, the burden of veterans' care and interest on borrowing to pay for war will continue to rise. The nature of the conflict was nigh unwinnable. It is a temporal war. The Afghan proverb, you have the watches, we have the time, holds very true here. Providing jobs and development to the youth educating the children and using the local leaders to negotiate with the Taliban might be one of the many solutions. The military force, however, will not easily solve this. This is a war of minds and ideas. Ideas are hard to eradicate. The terrorist ideas are dense with thick nourishments of hate and extremisms founded upon irrationality and the intervention from religion. The war engenders too much loss to the civilian than it did harm to the bad guys.